There's a word they call us now, Native Americans, which is a generic term I never liked. We are older than America, so how can we be Native than something we are older than? My name is Charlie Hill. Hill, that's the family name. Used to be Mountain, but I shortened it. You know, showbiz, you get that little edge. And we're Eastern tribes, Iroquois Confederacies, the Oneidas, Onondagas, Cayugas, Tuscarora, Mohawk, and Senecas. And you get interesting uh, combinations like I know a Mohawk married a Huron, their kids are morons, you know. <laughs> I know a Comanche that married a Pequot and they're Kumquats, those are their kids. <laughs> then I met someone who was a Chickasaw, Potawatomi, and Paiute, and he got his enrollment card, chicken pot pie. <laughs> Our bylaws of the Iroquois Confederacy is what Franklin Jefferson lifted to use uh, what they call democracy here. So the idea of uh, democracy, that's not uh, imported, that's indigenous, and that came from us. I had a heckler last time I did a show. I'm on stage, and he goes, I don't want to hear that crap, Indian. I'm an American. Why don't you go back where you came from? <laughs> so I camped in his backyard. <laughs> we have ancient traditions that we have and, and still use them, and that's what keeps us strong. But at the same time, we're also modern, contemporary people. Nice to see Indian faces in the crowd. I won't uh, have to explain the jokes tonight. That's nice. <laughs> Glad you all came out and the rest of you. Nice to be here. And uh, what else we got here? One little, two little, three little whiteies, four little, five little, six. <laughs> Does that piss you off, too? <laughs> Come on, white people. This land is my land. <laughs> this land ain't your land. Get the hell off of my land. Go find your own land. I used to hear when I started, gee, I never heard of a funny Indian before. And, and the woman that said it, I thought, she doesn't know better. And it's also very funny, but also real sad at the same time. And, and uh, I just want to say, white folks, what we're doing up here tonight, we're not white bashing. This is just a little spiritual spanking you should have got 400 years ago. <laughs> So you get around Indian people, there's always laughter. Even in times of stress, sorrow, sadness, there's always that undercurrent of humor. And something spiritual, there's always something funny about it because uh, joviality, lightness, laughter. They say laughter is the language of God. Oh. See, I don't have to be here. I can make a lot more money tonight at home going, B-27, <laughs> I-19. We're doing pretty good with our casinos, folks. Someday we're gonna buy our land back. <laughs> From the Japanese. <laughs> and um, I grew up in the Oneida Indian Reservation in Wisconsin. But my wife is rooted and steeped in tradition. And my kids all know their language. I just remember I gave my father-in-law two horses and a blender. And that's how I got my wife. I got a lot of material in the early days from the Lone Ranger and Tonto. We grew up on it. One thing I do remember about it was when we'd watch it, my mom and dad would say, that guy's a real Indian, meaning Jay Silverheels. When Jay Silverheels came around, there was no movement. There were no acting places. You can have top billing. Top billing? Well, equal billing. Equal billing. OK, OK. You can have complete sentences in your dialogue. I can say all the pronouns I want. No, no, no. Huh? No, no, no. Huh? No, no, no. Huh? I can guess all the pronouns you want. And, uh, but he was reduced to going, no, 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 keep us sorry. And the Lone Ranger always sent him into a bar. And like all Indians, he'd go into a white redneck bar in full regalia and get his ass kicked. But he called, uh, he, tonto was the word tonto. It means stupid or fool. And he called the ranger Kimosabi, which it means uh, he doesn't know. So he doesn't know and stupid, rode the planes for years. I think stand-up comedy, too, is one of the last bastions of uh, freedom of speech. And very few people are using it just to really say things. The white folks, you wouldn't even be here wasn't for Indian people. There wouldn't even be in America wasn't for us. You know, this is, would still be Europe Junior. And you came to this country and we taught you how to survive. We taught you about democracy. We taught you how to fight the British so you could be free. 
Hide behind the trees. <laughs> so come to us now. We can fix this country, all the problems it has. We can fix it because we have the owner's manual. <laughs> Everything you're going through now, we've survived it already. We have the economy, what economy, you know? The war on terrorism, hell, we've been fighting terrorism since 1492. <laughs> We've only had metal detectors on Plymouth Rock, that shit would have been nipped right in the bud. <laughs> Richard Pryor I met in 1976, and I remember seeing him on stage, and I thought, oh, wow, Richard Pryor. A couple weeks before that, I see Red Fox on stage. And he liked my act, and he's making a big deal about it. But I'm embarrassed, because I've only been in Hollywood four months, and I'm just green. The next day, he says, you, you use my number. You call me. So I call him up, and he didn't even remember who I was. So when I met Pryor, he gives me his phone number, and I thought, oh, here we go again. But Richard, uh, he called me up, and he took me to the movies. He says, you talk to these white people like they're dogs. We got to get together, motherfucker. And uh, I can tell you, it's a family man. You know, he brought up his mother. It's like, wow, and every time I saw him, he had time for me, and he put me on his show, and that's how I got my start. And I was 26 years old, and I was thrilled, and I remember calling up my mom. He said, Mom, I'm finally gonna be on TV. I'm gonna be on the Richard Pryor show. And there was a pause, and she goes, ain't that a shame what happened to Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> they wanted him to dress like Custer, introduce me, and then fall down and have all these arrows in his back. And he wouldn't do that. Right to the last minute, he was still fighting for me. But by then, they already had the scenery set up for me. So to this day, I'm the only comedian to ever come on stage from out of, behind a rock. You know. <laughs> Just having a mirage here on the desert, thought I saw TV cameras in front of me. <laughs> uh, I'd like to introduce now a uh, new talent on the show. He's an Indian brother, uh, Iroquois Nation, uh, Mr. Charlie Hill. Please welcome me. Pilgrims came to this land 400 years ago as illegal aliens. Uh, you know, we used to call them whitebacks. Uh, you know, they started unloading the boats, building houses, you know, on the East Coast. First thing we asked, uh, you guys gonna stay tonight? Uh, then I just burn you up when people come over and they never leave. Yeah, we'll leave after Thanksgiving, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People celebrate that every year, Thanksgiving. You have a lot of holidays. This is uh, Indian's country. There's no Indian holidays. There's Thanksgiving, Columbus Day, and every. Oh, no, there's, there's one holiday we do uh, celebrate with white people. It's uh, Halloween. Uh, every year, we dress up like white people, see? <laughs> and we go door to door, and we get anything we want, you know? Trick or treaty. <laughs> And I, I couldn't believe it. It was like, when he thought I was funny and I was real green, I thought that's like Mickey Mantle telling you, you got a nice swing. So that's what it is. And it's good when I see these other guys and Larry, we talk about our experiences because we have that uh, thing all the time that we only, only we experience. And our true nature is love when we thought with our hearts, not with our minds. And the proof of that is if you're ever grieving, hold up a little baby and that just helps you with the pain. And you see a little baby, you don't even know who the baby is, what family, but you gravitate toward that baby. Oh, I love you. Oh, you're drooling, can I hold you? Because we lock in with our hearts. And then we forget about that, because maybe 40 years later, it didn't work out for this baby. And he's homeless, and he's standing out in front of a 7-Eleven, and we don't go, oh, you're cute, you're drooling. Can I pick you up, oh. Power of the spirit, too, you know. That's African-Americans, they, they're living proof too. You can't extinguish the human spirit. And they brought us the blues. They taught us, you know. It's just like our stuff. You know, I met a guy before the show, he's really proud of his heritage. He says, Charlie, you know, my great-great-grandfather was African-American and Native American. I'm thinking, 
That poor bastard, they not only stole his land, they made him work on it for free. So. Declaration of Independence, the, the phrase savage Indian is written in it like three or four different times, and nobody's ever changed it or addressed it or anything. And so we get people to laugh with us instead of at us. And, uh, but we're fighting hundreds of years of stereotypes just by the very act that we're up here. I'm an Oneida, and I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, that's where my people are from. Um, we used to be from New York. I had a little real estate problem. Uh, uh, take my land, please. <laughs> Charlie Hill. Well, it's nice to see somebody new with that kind of sense of humor. For take my land, please. <laughs> I always wondered how long I'd like to do this. And my dad said, oh, you say, look at Bob Hope. And I used to think, you know what I want to do? I want to be as old as George Burns and keep doing this. And I'll be the most far out, militant, hardest hitting comic. Because when you're an old Indian man, who's going to question you? So when I get blue, that's all I can do. Reservation blue. What I'd like to do, I guess continue what I'm doing and get better at it, that's one thing. I would love to have a cable special where I could just let it go all out. I still want to try it for the Yankees. You know, I never got the call. I figured they're going to call me someday. Man, I like to be healthy and be old. You know, I'd like to see us get our land back tonight. <laughs> that's what my friend said. He saw my act one night. He says, man, you were out there tonight. You sounded like you wanted your land back tomorrow. And, uh, well, kind of. <laughs> Oh, my God.